I have no idea what this one's going to go. No, no, no. no. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. Why is everybody acting so weird? <laughs> I feel like I'm going with them. Hello, my gorgeous book besties, and welcome to today's video. Today we have another little reading vlog, and I thought since there are so many new releases that I feel like have come out recently, I thought it'd be fun to read only new releases for an entire week. So that's what we're gonna do. And the book that we're actually gonna start the vlog off with is The Housemaid is Watching by Freedom McFadden, which is the third one in the Housemaid series. And this literally came out a week ago. Maybe not even that. And I've already seen quite a few people on TikTok that have already finished reading this. And I'm just so intrigued to see what this one's like because I have seen quite a few mixed things about it. So it kind of makes me a bit nervous going in. But I feel like, as always, you can't really go wrong with a Freedom McFadden. So I'm really excited to start this. And I actually preferred the second one in the series to the first one, so it'd be really interesting to see whether I prefer this to both of them as well. So I'm really excited, and as always, I will keep you updated as we go along. on the housemaid is watching i've literally just moved out the sun because i got really really hot and i actually got myself some strawberries as well so i'm gonna eat these and read some more of my book i'm actually really really enjoying this just reached the 100 page mark and i'm not gonna lie i was kind of skeptical going into this just because i'd heard so many mixed things on it it's been a couple weeks since this has actually been released and just the amount of mixed things i've heard and people saying that they were kind of disappointed because it was a lot slower than the first two i actually think the pace of this is very similar to the second one just in that i feel like we're setting up for something and then it's all gonna kind of kick off which i did find in the second one as well and i kind of do get what people mean just because it is kind of her going about her life and like we don't really know where the plot's kind of going to go and everything's just a bit weird and little pieces being revealed here and there but, but the actual plot hasn't actually been revealed yet like just something weird is going on that's all we really know i kind of really like that vibe i like kind of where it's taking us because i do think it has that kind of eerie feeling and that feeling of something bad's about to happen but we don't really know what it is and we don't really know who to trust or what's going on basically so i'm actually really enjoying it so far and every single one of freedom of Family books are just so quick and fast paced and just so easy to read and so easy to kind of get lost in and that's what I absolutely love about her books and this one is literally no different for me. I feel very much like I'm hooked from the first page and I just want to know where she's going to take this and also Millie as a character I really like her and I like how we've kind of followed her through the whole series and I really like Enzo. I really like him. I've literally liked him since the first book <laughs> and I honestly just love that little dynamic that they've got going on. Also, something that I was thinking when I was reading this, I would absolutely love to see a prequel that follows Millie when she was in jail. I would love to see that. I'd love that. She spent 10 years in prison and I just feel like what did she get up to? What went down? I just imagine crazy stuff went down <laughs> and I would just love there to be a prequel and for us to follow that plot. I think that would be so cool. But for now I'm gonna carry on. I will update you when I'm probably about halfway through and hopefully by then things will have kicked off a bit more and there'll be a bit more of a kind of solid plot. <laughs> Also say short chapters I love I love them I've said it before and I will say it again <laughs> it's just something about it that I just feel like I whiz through a book if it has short chapters because I just don't put it down <laughs> which seems silly because you could put it down at any point but I think that's why I read so much because I could put it down every few pages but I'm not gonna <laughs> but I like that the option is there <laughs> A lot later on now I just thought I'd do a little check-in because I've actually got quite a way through this book this is how much I've got left so I'm just over halfway through my thoughts so far I'm still like what is the plot 
but not in a bad way. I'm finding that the writing is very fast paced. I'm finding that I am intrigued and I am hooked with it. But at the same time, I am kind of like, I have no idea where this book is gonna go. <laughs> And earlier on I said that the start of this did have that kind of eerie feeling which I can't really say much without kind of giving something away in the book but there was something kind of happening in her house that kind of gave that creepy eerie feeling like that you felt like you were on the edge of your seat kind of vibe. I will say that I'm not really getting that vibe anymore like that eerie kind of vibe but there is definitely a feeling of something weird is going on and it's almost like she has to kind of explain all these weird things that are happening for hopefully a big reveal big twist type thing so i am very much hoping for a big twist that i'm hopefully not gonna guess before it happens because the first book in the series i did guess the twist which i did really really enjoy that book but just because i guessed it, it didn't have that kind of shocking factor that i love in a thriller and then the second book i read so quickly that i literally didn't even have time to guess or work anything out because i literally wasn't thinking i was just reading it i literally read that book in one sitting <laughs> and with this one i feel like i am sort of trying to work out what's going on but i am also getting through it super quickly so that's kind of stopping me from trying to work out too much but i am definitely really enjoying it so far i really like being with millie and seeing what her life is like now because this is set quite a few years on from the last book and also her internal dialogue is just so funny to me like some of the things she says or thinks I'm like that's just it really just makes me giggle so I've really enjoyed kind of being in her head even if I don't really agree with her at times I just think she's a funny character and the way that she thinks about things is just really amusing this one basically follows Millie and she's now got a husband she's got kids she's recently moved to this new kind of fancy house in this fancy area and her house is in a cul-de-sac with two other houses and both the people that live in these other houses are kind of weird in their own way. And there's just basically something strange going on, but she doesn't really know what it is. She's just getting a weird vibe. We're getting a weird vibe. Everything's just a bit weird. <laughs> and I would love to know the explanation for all the weird things that are happening because there are quite a few that I'm like, you're dropping little things here and there. And I'm like, how are you gonna tie this all together? Like, how is this gonna make sense? So I am really enjoying that. And like I said before, the chapters are really short, which means it's literally like we're going from scene to scene to scene, which is really nice. I feel like that is kind of what's making me think that it is quite fast paced. And like I always say, I just think Freedom of Adam's writing is just so quick and easy to read and you just get so lost in it. So I'm currently on page 208 and that's chapter 41 and I think there's like 380 something pages. So I have about 170, 180 pages to go and I'm really intrigued to kind of see how this is all going to wrap up and how everything's going to tie together. I'm really intrigued to see that. The way I literally said <laughs> two seconds ago doesn't really have that airy feeling anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> because this chapter alone, I'm like, okay, it's about to kick off. It's all about to kick off. And why is it creeping me out like that? <laughs> why is the airy feeling literally come back in this one chapter? <laughs> How have we managed to end up here? Oh my god! I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Hello, good morning. I don't even have my book up here. <laughs> oh no! I have, I think, about 140 pages left something like that. I read so much yesterday and I literally didn't even realise how much I'd read until I had like a third left of the book but I'm really enjoying it. I'm so excited to find out what's going on <laughs> basically. So I'm going to read some of that later on today but I'm about to head out to the works because yesterday A Thousand Broken Pieces by Tilly Cole came out and the works have a really nice sprayed edge version that I really want to go and get and I'm just hoping that they have copies left. I really really hope that they do because I know that new releases especially at my local works sell out so quickly so quickly so I'm hoping that there will be one there fingers crossed and I also haven't been to the works in ages so it'd be nice to go and see if they've got any new books I have seen on TikTok that some people's works have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez and I've never seen Abby Jimenez books in there since they like 
got big on booktok basically so i'm really hoping that they have abby jimenez as well i would absolutely love them to have part of your world and yours truly there as well because i know that it's a series and i think the reading experience is better if you read from the start but i know that you can also read them as standalones so fingers crossed i thought i'd bring you along with me and just go and see what they have in the works today <laughs> So it's a little bit later on now as you saw i went shopping i got a few books which i'm so excited about and i just came home i was reading a bit more as you will have seen and then i remembered the little haul that i got and i thought that i would show you before i do a little update on the housemaid is watching so i picked up three books from the works the first one is the reason that i wanted to go which is a thousand broken pieces by tilly cole look at the sprayed edges i think that is honestly so pretty so cute. This one is the second one to A Thousand Boy Kisses and I read that right at the start of me first getting into reading. So it honestly seems like so long ago, even though it was probably a year and a bit ago, year and a half, maybe two years now. And I did like that one, I did enjoy it. I remember reading it super, super quickly, but I think I read it straight after If He Had Been With Me. I absolutely loved If He Had Been With Me, so I feel like it would have been quite hard to follow that. But because it's a book of a similar vibe i think because i read it straight after I, I didn't connect with it as much as i did with if he had been with me i think i rated it like a three star something like that so a solid book one that i was glad that i read but when i heard about this one i was so intrigued this one follows poppy's sister and poppy is the girl in the first book and i was just really interested in it and i just wanted to see what it was like and how it compares to the first book as well because i do also think my reading taste has kind of changed so it would be interesting to see how i find this one now whether i like it more than the first one or not as much as the first one. So that's the first one that I got. And then we have Just For The Summer by Abby Jimenez. They didn't have Part Of Your World or Yours Truly there, which is so sad, but I will hopefully pick them up soon. I do want to read them in order because it's meant to be a better reading experience. But I picked this one up because I just don't think I'm gonna get it any cheaper than three pounds. <laughs> that's a literal bargain. I don't know how they've got it that cheap especially since it's a newer release like i swear it only came out like last month or something and i'm yet to read an abby jimenez book so i'm really really looking forward to this and i just have a feeling she's going to be an author that i really connect with don't know why it just gives me that vibe and then i also got this one this one i haven't seen anything about but i read the back of it and i was like i need it i need it this one is called somebody i used to love and it's by eve ainsworth and this one basically follows will who wakes up after a car accident and he's lost three years of memory and the only person he wants to see is his childhood sweetheart but they're not together but he doesn't realize this and she is absolutely heartbroken from whatever happened with them too and i think it's kind of giving like second chance romance kind of vibe and it says a heartbreaking and twisty will they won't they should they dark romance which i'm really looking forward to and that just sounded like something that i'd absolutely love so so here for this and then also i very kindly got sent a book in the post from john murray press and it's bodies by christine and foley this one i actually got sent an arc for this book and this is the actual finished book i don't know how else to say that <laughs> this is the actual one with the actual cover that you can buy in stores and i had no idea that they were going to send me an actual one as well as the arc so i'm so excited to have this i read this when i first got sent it and i really liked it it's definitely one that's more on the weirder side of things it's just because you're kind of reading it you're like what on earth is going on but in the best way possible and i really really liked it i think i rated it four maybe four and a half stars so it was a very very solid read i really enjoyed it it is one that i still think about just with how kind of twisty it is and it's just got a really i don't know how to pinpoint the vibe it's like i want to say sinister but it's not sinister it's kind of like an eerie feeling to it and i'm so happy that i have an actual final edition of it so thank you so much 
John Murray Press for sending me this. It's honestly unlike any book that I've ever read genuinely. And then moving on to The Housemaid is Watching. I am now on part three which is 289 so let's call it 290. That means I have about 90 pages left. Quick maths. And things have taken a turn. I do have a few ideas of kind of what's going on. And one of the things has just been revealed that I thought earlier on. So there was a bit of a twist but it wasn't like a jaw-dropping shocking twist but it was a good twist and I'm happy that that's kind of where she went with it. As for the rest of it I kind of have a vague idea of what I think is going on but I'm really trying not to think about it too much. I'm trying to just read it and accept it for what it is because I want to be surprised. I'm hoping to finish this today at some point and I will let you know my final thoughts when I finished it. It's the next day and I finished reading The Husband Was Watching last night and I really really enjoyed this. I'm not gonna lie I did guess every single twist that there was. <laughs> but that didn't mean I enjoyed it any less. I think I obviously would rate it higher if there was a jaw-dropping, shocking sort of twist. But I feel like with the Housemaid series in general, there's not really been that many sort of shocking twists. They're just really good sort of thriller, eerie vibe type books. And I feel like the mystery element of it you could work out. If you kind of go in knowing that and kind of take it for what it is, I feel like you would really enjoy them. And I think some of her other books definitely do have more of those sort of jaw dropping twists. But because I kind of knew that going into this one, just based on the first two, I didn't really have massively high expectations for that sort of twist going on in here. I did expect some sort of twist, but like I said, I did predict it before it happened. But it is also something that I worked out that I wanted to then happen because I kind of had it in my head and I liked the idea of that. So it really didn't make me enjoy it any less. I absolutely love how different each one of these books are in this series because it would be so easy from the first one and the plot of the first one to kind of carry on down that route but the second one the plot is so different to the first one and then this one is so different from the other two and I absolutely love that because I just feel like it keeps it really new and kind of fresh and I also really like that we saw Millie in a different sort of situation. I like that we followed her with her husband and this new house and with kids and we're seeing her as a mum and also as a person that isn't financially struggling as much as she has done in the first two books and I feel like that was really nice to see her in sort of a different situation a different light and to see her kind of growth from the first book and again I feel like that kept it really interesting and fun and I like how her situation in her life now was important to the plot and I just like how it all kind of came in. This is another one where I found Freedom of Fadden's writing super fast paced, super easy to read. I can absolutely see what people are saying about the pace of this one being a bit slower but I personally really enjoyed that because at the start we're kind of following Millie going about her life is what it feels like but there's also something weird going on and I feel like the atmosphere at the start, that kind of eeriness, that kind of something weird is happening but we don't know what, I feel like that works really well with a bit of a slower pace and I feel like that's maybe why people are saying it's a lot slower slower to start because the pace of it is kind of setting up but it's also creating the atmosphere that something weird is happening and that was something that I actually really enjoyed because it just kind of gets your brain going you're like what on earth is going on like why is everybody acting so weird <laughs> and then from the end of part one from then on it is very very fast paced it's all kind of kicking off it's very chaotic and of course I really enjoyed that part as well and it definitely is that sort of book that you just want to finish because you want to know what's going on and the last line of this was just so it just made me so happy because it was a very circular kind of moment and I think Freedom at Fallon does it in a really clever way and I like how that's done. I can't really say much more than that without giving spoilers but it just felt very like a nice way to just wrap the whole series up. But like I said before, I need a prequel. I need a prequel following Millie in her 10 years in prison. I need that and I need it now. <laughs> I just think that would be so good and so chaotic in the best way possible. So as for rating, I think I'm gonna rate this four stars. That's kind of my initial feeling towards it which is the same as the second one, I believe. So I'm gonna give this four stars. I think overall it's a four star series. As for my next book, I honestly cannot decide what I want to read. I can't even work out what genre I'm in the mood for. So I haven't worked out yet what my next book is, but you will literally see that in the next clip when I decide to pick it up. It's just every single book I look at on my TBR, I'm like, oh uh, yeah, maybe. And then I open it and I'm like, nope, no, not now, not now. And I genuinely cannot find one that I'm like, yes, that's what I'm in the mood to read right now. This is the problem with being a mood reader. <laughs> I have a few options, but I just can't work out what I can imagine myself reading right now. I don't know, we'll work it out. And when I do, I will keep you updated. <laughs>
as you saw last night I actually picked up my next book which is Another Love Story by Ashley Posson. I actually ended up asking you guys on my Instagram story which one out of this or A Thousand Broken Pieces by Tilly Cole which one you'd rather see me read and this one actually won by quite a lot I think it was like 60% of the votes were for this one and I have been really excited to read this so I thought it was about time that I picked it up and it feels like it's been quite a while since I've read Seven Years Slip which is also by Ashley Boston so I feel like I need some of that sort of magical realism romance so I'm about 130 pages in I read 100 pages last night and then this morning I've read about 30 pages so far and I'm really really enjoying it basically follows Eileen and she's part of this book club and this book club basically meet every summer and go to this cabin for a little holiday but this year nobody can actually make it but Eileen's decided that she really needs a holiday and that she's going to go by herself and just spend the week basically reading and getting away from everything that's going on in her life at the minute so she packs up her car gets on the way there and her car actually ends up breaking down and she's in the small town and basically as time goes on she realizes that it's the town and the characters from her favorite book series so she's basically found herself in a book and she meets this grumpy bookshop owner and he's the only one that knows that they are both basically in this fictional village with these fictional characters. So there's a bit of a question there of like how does he know and how is he kind of acknowledging it and it's just such an interesting concept and I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm really liking seeing her going around the village and everything. I'm not sure yet on the main guy character. He's very kind of cold at the start and I think he's meant to be but I'm just not sure how it's going to kind of turn around in that aspect but we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the romance part of it is actually like. I'm really enjoying her meeting her favourite characters because obviously she knows all these characters but the characters don't know who she is and it really got me thinking of like my favorite book series and like say if I ended up in the world of like Magnolia Parks and I was thinking would I be able to like look at a person and be like oh you're Daisy or you're Christian or like would I be able to like pinpoint every single person and how long would it take me to notice that's what it's got me thinking <laughs> but I guess that's kind of different because that is set in London so if I found myself in London maybe I wouldn't even notice that my favorite characters were there at some point surely I would but it's just got me thinking like how long would it take me to actually realise what was going on. I also really like the sort of magical feel it has when it's talking about the fictional town and these characters and like the bookstore or the grocery store or the little cafe it's just got such a magical feel to it. Just the way that Ashley Poston writes it and describes it just feels very special and magical and like you literally want to go there which I've also been really enjoying because I don't tend to absolutely love loads of description and like the prologue for this even though it's literally like a page and a half was very sort of whimsical magical explanation but I absolutely loved it I loved how it felt just so magical and that's coming from somebody that doesn't usually like a ton of over description of places but I actually really enjoyed that part of it and I'm excited to see kind of what she gets up to and also the romance between them isn't that heavy right now and it's just very it feels like more of a sort of a background thing going on rather than the main plot like the main plot at the minute feels very much like her in this book series and what she's actually gonna get up to in this town and I've also really enjoyed her sort of background story that we've got as well because she's basically had the worst year ever and she's taken herself on this holiday by herself because she needs to get away from her life and just have a break and it's been really nice to kind of see her backstory and how that was told but yeah so far so good I'm gonna read some more and I will update you when I have some more thoughts on it but so far so good, I'm really enjoying it. It's currently just gone midnight and I'm just reading some more of my book and something super cute has just happened. I'm literally on page 162 and they've just made a reference to Seven Year Slip. And I just... That's just made me so happy. I literally love it when they do that. I love it. And it was a little thing that like, if you know, you know. If you've read Seven Year Slip, you'll notice it. But if you haven't read it, it still makes sense to you and you just kind of won't think anything of it. But I'm so happy that she included that. I just think that is the cutest thing ever. The cutest thing ever. It makes me so happy. I finished. I finished a novel of story and this was a really cute read. I don't think it's necessarily one that's going to stick with me and I'll kind of explain why in a minute but the concept of this I really really like. I liked how she fell into this town that she knew really well and there were characters that she knew really well. And I really liked the magical kind of whimsical description of the town right from the very beginning and like I said before that's coming from somebody who doesn't tend to like 
loads and loads of description because I just kind of find that I zone out a lot of the time but I actually really liked that about this and I feel like that was what made it feel kind of like the magical realism aspect that Ashley Blossom's books do have because I feel like even though the magical realism part is the fact that she's in a book series and she's in that town with those characters they're technically characters in this book that are then within a book <laughs> if that makes sense like at the end of the day they're just characters and so is the main girl in here is also a character so I feel like the magical realism part came more from kind of the description of the town and you really got that kind of vibe from that and that kind of reminded you that oh she's actually in this fictional town because otherwise it could have just been her in a small town and it could have just been a small town romance type thing if that makes any sense I feel like I've explained that really badly <laughs> I do think from my experience the first half I got through so quickly I found that I was really into the book but I feel like the second half I don't know what it was about it but I didn't find that I was as invested in it and I think it actually could have been 100 pages shorter and that sounds really harsh but I don't mean it in like a harsh way I just kind of mean it could have been wrapped up a bit quicker I think I really like the way Ashley Poston kind of has these circular things that come back around and her books and characters and things that happen or things that are said feel very purposeful in that everything's there for a reason and they're going to come back up or be used in a certain way later on and I really like that about her writing. This to me didn't feel very much like a kicking your feet giggly type of romance which is okay because not all romances are like that but I feel like I was a bit detached from those characters and from the romance like I wasn't massively rooting for them to get together like I was just enjoying her going around this town and meeting these characters that she already knew and the romance side of it I wasn't as fussed about. I think the main guy was so hard to pinpoint because I feel like his character arc or character development was very jumpy and I couldn't really pinpoint what kind of a character he was. Like he started off this grumpy bookstore owner but then he jumped to this kind of taking control of the situation and, and then he kind of jumped to this more heartfelt and sensitive kind of person. And I understand that somebody can be all of those things but it just felt very jumpy to me and just very much like in each scene, this was the scene where we were getting the sensitive version of him, this was the scene that we were getting more of the grumpy side of him. It didn't feel like it flowed very well in terms of his character and his character development. And it almost feels like there were three guys in one. <laughs> And I think that's partly what made me feel so kind of detached from their romance or their story. I also feel like we didn't really see that much of them together or them getting to know each other. Like we know that they did spend time together but I don't really feel like we saw that much of it because I do think it was a lot more focused on her kind of exploring this town and meeting these characters and going to all the places that she'd read about in these books. But I feel like their connection, we didn't really see it. We were kind of just told that it was there and we kind of just had to assume that they get on really well and that they know each other. Other. I don't feel like I know them <laughs> and I don't feel like I know what kind of a relationship they really have with each other and I feel like for a romance that's quite a big part that's kind of missing and also the more spicy scenes kind of made me cringe a bit only because I had this version of him in my head <laughs> and when it got to the spy scene it didn't match up and I was like whoa 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 who is this guy <laughs> who who is this guy so sometimes it did make me cringe which I feel like when a book makes me cringe it really pulls me out of the story and I'm like no 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 but other than that I did enjoy it I really really like the concept of it I really like that we kind of saw more of her background I kind of wish a bit that we'd got more of his background as well and sort of how he'd ended up there because I don't really think that was explained fully we did get to see some of his background but I feel like I don't know there was something missing in it and I don't really know what it was but I also thought it was kind of drawn together really nicely as well and I liked that the characters within the book their stories were kind of tied up nicely but then also the characters in this book were also tied up nicely. I liked how that was done. There was one point in this towards the end which I can't really say much about that just didn't make sense to me. I'm going to talk about it for those that have read this book. So I'm going to put a timestamp here of when to skip to so that you don't get any spoilers. So this is your warning that there's about to be spoilers. <laughs> So don't listen. If you haven't read it, don't listen. Don't listen. This is your warning. <laughs> okay, so spoiler warning. The part towards the end when B comes back and Anders sees B and B is basically the character that the author who wrote the books put most of herself into that character and Anders, as we find out, is the author's fiance or ex-fiance. What I really didn't 
understand and it kind of lost me a bit towards the end he's ready to leave with Eileen our main girl he's ready to leave with her but then minute B shows up who he doesn't even know like yeah there are parts of the author in her he's never met her before and also she's fictional <laughs> why on earth when Eileen said you go get her it's okay you go get her why he would agree to that why he would choose B over Eileen I just that doesn't make sense to me and that says to me more so that maybe Eileen and his connection wasn't as strong as we've been told it was. It kind of bothered me because it kind of felt a bit out of character for him and I can completely see why he would want to maybe talk to B a bit and get to know her a bit in terms of remembering his ex-fiance but I can't really understand why he'd be like yeah you leave without me and I'm not go I'm not going with you anymore. <laughs> and I'm like throwing that whole thing away for a fictional character that I've actually never met. Something about that, I don't know. I know that it kind of built up the ending because we didn't know whether he was going to show up or not at the end. I feel like it would have made more sense in my head if he'd maybe just wanted to stay in that town and wasn't ready to let go of his fiance. and after Eileen was gone then he realised that he missed her and he couldn't be without her kind of thing. But the fact that he literally chose somebody else over her, that's what it felt like. <laughs> kind of bothered me reading that and I was like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't doesn't make sense. I don't know. That's just something that kind of bothered me, but it's okay. <laughs> but overall, did enjoy it. I had a good time reading it. I'm going to rate it 3.5 stars, I think. I think that might go down to 3 because I don't tend to love giving half stars to things. I try and give whole stars where I can. <laughs> but I feel like at the minute it's 3.5. But for my next new release of the week. I actually started this last night. I've, I'm only 23 pages in and that's A Thousand Broken Pieces by Tilly Cole which you saw me pick up earlier on in this vlog. This is the second one to A Thousand Boy Kisses and I actually read that right at the start of my kind of reading journey and getting into reading so I'm really intrigued to kind of see how I get on with this now because I do feel like my reading taste has changed and developed over the year or two years maybe that I've been reading. So I am intrigued to see what this one's like. This one follows Poppy's sister. Poppy is from the first book. This follows her sister and follows her after everything happens in the first book. I feel like this is going to be kind of difficult to talk about without ruining the first book. But basically her and Kale, the two main characters, are struggling with a similar thing and they get sent on this around the world traveling trip to help teenagers that are struggling and they haven't met yet. Like I said, I'm literally only 20 pages in and I've literally only read them two to getting told that they're going on this trip. So I'm excited to see what their dynamics like and them meeting. I'm excited for all that. And also excited for the little trip that we're going on. <laughs> I feel like I'm going with them. That's my little reading update for now. I will catch up with you when I've read more of A Thousand Broken Pieces. <laughs>
to read. And right at the start, all these teens basically meet up in the airport to start their trip together, and that's the first time they all meet each other. And I just feel like with the mindset that they were both in, so both Savannah and Kale, our main two characters, I feel like the first thing they'd be thinking when they first met each other wouldn't be, she's the most beautiful girl in the world, or he really caught my eye. Like, I just don't think that is what they'd be thinking, because if they're so consumed with this grief, as the book kind of set them up to be, I don't think their first instinct is to go down that route. Like, I just don't even think that would be a thing that they would be thinking. That kind of threw me off right at the beginning, because it just felt very insta-lovey. I didn't feel reading it like that's actually what they would be thinking, or the mindset that they would even be in at that moment in time. I kind of imagined that they would go on this trip together as a group and then kind of find that they were being drawn back to each other in sort of a more subtle way and more maybe a friendship to start with. I imagined that it would be more slow burn in that it would kind of take them a lot to actually open up to each other and then when they realised that they sort of felt lighter around each other that then they started to think, oh actually I really like you and I like spending time with you. I also think having read more than that now and seeing their connection, I feel like I don't really know what they're like as individuals and I feel like they don't really know each other as individuals. Like, I feel like they just kind of know each other's grief and what's happened and obviously that's a really important part and it's really important for them to share that with each other. But I feel like we're not really seeing much of them as individuals. It's more so what's happened in their life and what they're dealing with and I feel like I don't really know their sort of personality and if I don't know that reading it I feel like they don't know it for each other as well so it is feeling very insta lovey to me and I don't know what it is about this book but I'm really really struggling to actually sit down and read it physically I don't know whether it's the really small text I don't know whether it's the really long chapters I don't know what it is but I find that when I'm reading it I'm just like oh, I don't want to be reading this and I, I just feel like I'm getting through it so slowly so I started listening to it on audiobook and that has helped me get through basically the majority majority of these 190 pages. I think maybe if it wasn't on Spotify audiobooks I probably would have DNF'd it but I am kind of wanting to push through and wanting to see where they take the story and also because it's a follow-on from A Thousand Boy Kisses I do want to see where these characters go and kind of what happens to them but I feel like I maybe should have DNF'd it. To be completely honest I'm still thinking of potentially DNFing it. I have some opportunity today to listen to the audiobook quite a lot throughout the day so I think I'm going to do that, see how I feel and see how far I can get in this. So that's how I'm feeling so far and I kind of think I'm in the minority here because I was looking on Goodreads at the reviews and the reviews are all a majority four star five star so I do think I am in the minority here and I think that also might partly be to do with the fact that I wasn't necessarily that connected to the ones in the first book, like Poppy and Rune. Like, I liked them, but I'm not, like, massively attached to them. So reading this, which is following her sister, and Poppy is mentioned quite a lot. I feel like, because I'm not that connected to her in the first place, it doesn't kind of hit as much as it would to somebody that was, if that makes any sense. So that's my little update. I'm kind of sad because I wish that I absolutely loved it. I'm going to listen to some more, see how we go, and I'll update you when I have more thoughts. <laughs> update I finished <laughs> I honestly feel like it's taken me about five months to read this book <laughs> it obviously hasn't taken me that long it's taken me like four or five days which is typically longer than it would usually take me to read a 300 and something page book my thoughts on it have not changed that much since I last updated you which is why I haven't updated in between because I just very much felt the same way and I didn't really have anything else to kind of add on to what I'd already said. This book is very very heavy in terms of talking about grief and the experience of going through grief and I feel like for some people that would be really really nice to read in some ways because it's relatable and some of the ways that it's described and the things that people are going through some of the things are really beautifully written and beautifully talked about but I just did not get on with this book at all. I think it's partly because that was basically all this book was. And even though it's a really important topic, and I'm not trying to make that less than it is in any way, but I felt very much like their whole relationship was kind of built on this basis of grief and they were both struggling. And even though, yeah, it makes sense that people would connect that way, I feel like we didn't really evolve in their relationship. Like that was very much all we saw of it and we didn't really see their kind of individual personalities or them without the grief aspect. 
which again I do get because their personalities aren't without this grief. These characters are dealing with grief every single day and it is kind of part of who they are but I just feel like we kind of lost sort of their personality even towards the end when they'd kind of gone on their healing journey. I still felt like we didn't really know them as characters. The majority of this I listened to on audiobook because I don't know what it was about this. I just could not sit down and read it. Every time I did that I literally felt like it was just going so slowly and I just couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it. It would honestly feel like it took me an hour just to get through one chapter. I don't know if that's the writing style or the layout of the book, like with the long chapters and the small text and everything. I don't know whether it's because it's quite a heavy topic. I don't know what it was, I don't know what it was, but I just could not sit down and read this book. Towards the end, I actually was kind of enjoying listening to it. And to be completely honest, I don't think I would have finished it if I hadn't been able to listen to the audiobook, just because that that's how much I struggled to get through it. <laughs> the thing is I can see how people would absolutely love this and connect with it so deeply but for me personally I just didn't and I think that was a real missing piece for me. I don't know whether part of it as well is actually to do with how much romance I've read this month because majority of it except from like two books I think have been romance after romance after romance and I feel like if I read that much of any genre I kind of get sick of it so I don't know whether that was partly to do with it but then I don't know I feel like if it was a romance that I really connected with I wouldn't have minded so I don't know. <laughs> I think if you absolutely loved the first one you would also like this one. I think also because for me the first one was like a three star book, it was okay. It's not one that I really think about. It's one that I'm glad that I read but it's just not one of my favourites but I think if you absolutely loved that one I think you would still enjoy this one. So I don't want to put you off especially if you did like the first one because I do think that this is just a case of it wasn't for me and I just didn't click with it. I think I'm gonna rate it two stars. Oh that seems so harsh. <laughs> That seems so harsh. But purely based on the fact that I struggled to actually sit down and read it and I feel like that says a lot. Also because this book took me longer than I thought it would to get through. We are actually over a week now. I started this vlog last Thursday and it's currently Saturday. I was going to go Thursday to Thursday but obviously I didn't want to leave the vlog when I was like halfway through this book because I wanted to include like my final thoughts and everything after I finished it. So we are a little bit over the seven days. And that actually brings us to the end of this vlog. I've actually really enjoyed reading new releases for an entire week, for the most part. <laughs> I feel like we started off really strong and then it kind of slowly went downhill, but that's okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed. Please let me know if you did and I will hopefully see you in my next video.